currently available in Castle Bar today? Someone give me a number. Any number? 600. Chris? <laughs> Chris, no, somebody else. That isn't Chris. Give me a number of how many jobs are currently available in Castle Bar today? 20. Yes. Okay. Okay. Two. <laughs> um, so, uh, currently available uh, are 261 jobs. Uh, in terms of remote work, there are 261 jobs currently available today and, and that will keep progressing and, and tomorrow and next week there will be another set of jobs and that number will only grow. They're on a website called, like this is just kind of like your gateway drug into remote work, but um, Remote Circle. <coughs> remote Circle was developed by, sorry just check time to make sure I don't ramble, um, was developed by a guy in rural Scotland who had the same problem as us um, and he couldn't see the jobs that he could do um, from where he was. So you type in Castle Bar and you see the jobs. Grow Remote uh, focuses on remote employment, so not freelancing around entrepreneurship, not because they don't see the value there, or second sites indeed, not because they don't see the value, but just because of um, what we can do uh, and where we see a, a gap in uh, provision of resources. <coughs> and so when we started out in Grow Remote, we were thinking about remote work, like I even heard it mentioned today, in terms of remote from Dublin. So everything starts in Dublin and moves out from there. And one day, uh, we went on to, we googled remote jobs and we found a website at the time called nodesk.com and we saw 1,191 jobs. We were like, do you think we've been looking in the wrong place for the last two years while we were trying to figure out remote? And I suppose remote in, now has become to me fully distributed. So location agnostic or location less work. So it's not that um, it exists in, in, in any one place, it doesn't exist in any, in any um, community. And one of the challenges is that if you go onto jobs, uh, if you're looking for a job, you still search by your location. So you'll type in what's common. And the only things that will come up is what's physically there. Um, and yet if you're, if you're educated, you know where to look, you'll see the other jobs on a different website. But there are other things. So um, because we got familiar directly with companies who employ remotely, um, when we were looking through these websites, you'd find cases like this, right? So in Grow Remote, we say you need to make remote work both visible and accessible, okay? That job from Xavier is invisible to our communities because people search by location, so they search in Castle Bar. That says it's in Dublin. You don't think that you can do it from here. You absolutely can do it from here. Xavier is a fully remote company. Um, and again, like any other company, um, remote is how they work rather than just a perk. Um, so we went to Indeed and we were like, what's this lads? Like, that's, what's this? And they said, we just don't have the functionality. Uh, and that's the reason that we don't see this job in our community. So I suppose we then work on that by educating people around who the companies are and where they need to look. Um, Grow Remote itself, um, so people, I, 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 don't, I don't actually know an awful lot about remote work. Uh, I'm more interested in communities and community development. And what Grow Remote did is take an awful lot of people who are involved in communities and community work all across Ireland and take a first principles approach to community development. And that is, we need more money coming into our communities and staying in there. The vacancy rates on 17 counties in Ireland increased last year. Um, and how do, you, how do you attack a problem like increasing you know, the vacancy rates in the main streets? You need to get to the fundamental issues and the fundamental problems and the fundamental solutions. So we came together in a WhatsApp group in July 2018. We ran our first conference. Uh, we had no money, totally volunteer in all our spare time. We use technology enablers, like there's a platform called ChangeX, like that Men's Shed or GIY would run off. Blacklight Solutions uh, came on board and sponsored us uh, for some events, also helped us with hosting and things like that. Google Drive, Twitter, and Gitbook. And through using those three tools, um, we were able to open up in 70 communities, it wasn't overnight, it was over seven days, but, um, uh, and 111 communities at the time we wrote this, it's 133 now in 17 countries. Uh, because it's a borderless problem and it's a borderless solution. We've tra trained hundreds of people in the skill of remote work because remote is now in the skill. Uh, we've done one-to-one -one sessions with companies uh, to try and get them to bring in a remote team. So we don't mean remote within remote from Dublin. Again, we mean just let your jobs go locationless. Um, we built Ireland's first public jobs board where you can list your jobs for free on remotejobsireland.com. And we've run over 300 uh, events and information sessions 
um, and that's what our local chapter needs to do with um, school talks and, and education pieces. And last year we won the Social Entrepreneurs Ireland uh, Award in 2019. So our mission is to enable, uh, enable us to, to work, live and participate locally. And we do that by making remote work more visible and accessible. We actually started out, I don't know how many people are interested in digital spaces, but this is where we started out initially. Um, how do we fill spaces? And like Stephen mentioned, you know, there's still some can be at low occupancy depending on where they are. And we realised after a space to thrive, they needed to, to address get three cohorts. Um, and at the time, in 2018, there was a survey by Blueface going around saying there was an estimated 217,000 remote workers in Ireland. And we were like, Grant, we'll just bring them together for pints, and then after we do that, we'll tell them about space and they'll come in here. There isn't 217, uh, you know, but that's not even close to the number. We still don't know what the number is, but that's not it. And we were, I suppose every time you peel back a layer, you just get another part of the onion and you to peel again. But, um, so what we realised that we actually have to create remote workers in some areas. Um, we also realised that remote workers don't know each other. So at one of our events, two people met from Expedia. And um, the, they've been living five minutes away from each other, ten minutes away from each other for the last three years for the same company and didn't know about each other. And you've all of these stories like this, just mental. We just haven't been, I suppose, providing a support for them. In the Castle Bar meetup led by uh, Bernard Joyce, um, there was a guy who came to one of the first meetups and he had 200 cards. And I was like, what are they for? And he said, um, every meetup that has been here has been for self-employed and sole traders. There's been nothing for somebody like me who's employed by a company. And, and he met somebody else who's also working remotely. And that weekend, they went to, there were some kids to couch, to couch to 5K thing on that weekend. But that's perfect. You know, they meet each other, they, they spread awareness of it, and they get involved in the community. So we tried lots of things, and I suppose what we realised is that spaces and broadband don't fix all of our problems. So if you go to the commuters, which we, we did after we built some spaces, at 6 o'clock in the morning, and you say, you know, oh, you can come back here. They say, I'm not commuting at 6 o'clock in the morning because they have the option. My employer does not let me work remotely. And that's when we realised we need to go and address the policies within organisations and the structures and, and all of that. Like, our problem is just, we need to get right to the root of it. Um, and then the other thing that you hear the commuters say that people don't mention is uh, they leave the house at 6 o'clock, they don't have to get the kids ready for school, they read a book on the train, they come back and they do the same thing, the house is tidy up and they've got a nice and easy, easy life and they just don't want to stop the commute. So there are lots of, I guess, different reasons why people commute um, but definitely we found that with employers, um, I guess from our perspective, to stop the commute using remote work, you either enable those commuters to get a remote job and they can do that job from wherever, or you go to their employer and you convince them to put in um, remote policies. At the very start, because we're community people, not remote working people, we, we mapped out the ecosystem. So, like, there are all the jobs for that you can get, um, find remote work on, and we built a page, growremote.ie forward slash get started, um, that shows you where you can um, get all these in one location and all of the employers that are hiring. So currently how we work is we take all that dispersed information. Uh, so I don't know if you know Boundless, for instance, but they're an Irish company founded by a woman, Dee Coakley, who's from Roscommon. Um, and they are currently hiring for a payroll manager at 60,000 from where we are. Um, but if you take the likes of Boundless, they're hiring that job locationless across Europe. There's no reason for that job to be advertised in Castlebar. Because why would they? It doesn't make, there's no local money for locationless work. So what we do is build everything into a central depository and then uh, through a local chapter lead kind of build up that knowledge locally. So they might do local talk, local school talks for early intervention, information sessions, uh, work with employers, things like that. And in this case, Bernard uh, Joyce took up that, that lead here, which is fantastic. Um, so key learnings. Um, remote work is already here. The challenge with waiting for broadband, waiting for somebody to open up a second site office, waiting for whatever, is that we're waiting for this big bang. And actually, the remote work is already here, it's just advertised in new places, and we just need to know where to look. Um, the second piece was just from our work with hubs. Oh, it, it, companies are slow to listen to communities, right? Particularly, there's about 300 hubs that are open up across Ireland now, co-working spaces. 
So you've all these hubs going up to like Salesforce and being, open up with Lana Kilty, open up with the burn, how would you not open the burn? They're talking about the quality of life and all of those things. And companies that are on like real commercials and, and they just don't care about us in a lot of respects. Do you know, they just, that, that's just it. However, if we can go into companies and say, it's actually not about the burn, it's not about Lana Kilty, it's not about Casa Bar, um, your, your biggest challenge is access to talent and we can solve that for you. Um, and second of all, like we're hearing now from companies, business continuity is the buzzword. Snow day, no problem, business continuity, you've got remote workers. So we go into them, I guess, with a different cell. We don't talk about our communities, but we still get employment back in our communities. Um, we have learned that our talent in Ireland is not remote ready. So remote ready means you know where remote work is, you know whether it's for you, not for you, you're familiar with Slack, Zoom, Google, um, all of that. There's an organisation called Workplaceless who do certifications in remote work and they have a remote work competency model and they list out kind of all the skills that you'll need um, to get remote ready. Worth noting, the Irish ETVs, the Irish third level institutions, in particular GMIT, have been way ahead of the game in terms of internationally uh, what's happening. So we're well on the road to solving for uh, the remote ready um, talent challenge. Um, we are someplace along this curve on remote work. I actually don't know where it is because I'm too stuck in it. Um, but I don't know if you know the Irish company Stripe. Their first four hubs were city based. When they opened up, they opened up in Dublin or Oregon, wherever. Um, their sixth hub was a time zone. It was North America. It was fully remote. That disrupts everything because the next conversation with Stripe won't be go on here, Dublin, or Lisbon. It'll be remote across Europe. So when those jobs can be anywhere, how do we ensure that, 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 that they will be here? But also the fact that their latest hope, that, that their latest hope was fully remote, what does that mean for where we are on the curve and how soon is it till we get mainstream? To give you an example of companies that hire, uh, Buffer, we brought them to Tubber Curry to our first smart community. Louisa did that, it's down the back. Um, but 100% uh, remote, work them wherever you want, superb company, they send you away twice per year on a company retreat. Um, and, and they're great guys to, to work for. Really transparent, as a lot of remote companies are. So 70 is your base, multiply it out, and uh, you can earn that money from Castle Bar Westport. Um, automatic, again, uh, remote first, open vacation policy, which can be kind of bad, um, but uh, they cover all the costs of, co of company travel, which you have to do, and again, you get free company retreats. And I was speaking to somebody in brief, but there is also an opportunity for our communities to host uh, the retreats of these remote companies. I'm sure you all know Shopify, uh, led by John Reardon here in Ireland. Um, they employ at least one person in every, every community in Ireland, um, and they are a great company to work for. Doist are currently hiring for three roles, um, and I love them. Doist are, again, I suppose, uh, they make product productivity apps, but they're, to me, what remote work is, which is remote work is how you work, it's basic. And then your perks are after that. There are 40 hour wor uh, work weeks, there are 40 days paid vacation, there are uh, paternity, all of that. Uh, co working reimbursement, which means you can go up into the amazing Bridge Street and be well, renamed at Shoma. Um, and uh, they'll pay Shoma uh, for you to work in the local co working space. Um, so those are the kinds of companies, I guess, that we need to get familiar with. Irish companies that hire remotely, we map those, that's companies who are founded here. Scraping Hub, turnover of 12 million per year, they're in um, Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year this year. Brilliant company, hiring, HR, marketing, whatever you, you name it, they're all um, fully remote. Um, and all these are on our, our blog as well. Nearform, another remote first company, brilliant. Abode, you're obviously remote. Um, Glowfox are hiring a huge amount of people. They essentially do, quote unquote, I think it's really, really long, something like Airbnb for gyms. Anyway, they're up to about 120 people and they're hiring in more. Um, and again, they, 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 really, they will hire remote across Europe. They prefer to hire remote in Ireland. So it's getting familiar with companies like Glowfox that's really important. Then there's Burnage. So here in uh, Castle Bar, you have a local chapter leading this Burnage Joyce. And they're kind of like your local beacon for what is this, you know, how do I get involved, etc. Grow Remote is a neutral organisation. We've just secured um, half a million in funding, thanks in a huge amount to the knowledge uh, and, and support of the Western Development Commission who are here today, but also for the RDF fund from Enterprise Ireland. And the reason that it was important that we got RDF funding is because our 
violation is most aligned to economic development funding. So we want to remain media neutral. We don't care, we don't even actually care if you work remotely. One of our strategies to kind of work that out. We just care that you're aware of all the options and that if you want to work and live in your local community, you have every opportunity to, which means we can't be funded by jobs, boards, etc. because you can never get exclusivity because that's not where we sit. Um, and with that funding um, in the next number of months, we will uh, hire in a team, which will be the first big team in Ireland uh, to deliver um, remote working, to build, to build a pipeline of, of remote jobs and to ensure they get to our communities. That's for remote. Any questions, let me know. Thanks again for having me and uh, well done today, Maureen and the team.